Hey, hey everybody, Escape211 here, and we are doing another Best Loadouts video, and we are doing it for the big boy here, Ares. Now, this is one I have wanted to do for a bit because uh, a lot of people have asked about it, and Ares has had some significant or awesome changes to him that a lot of people have benefited from. A lot of people are actually considering him as their fifth slot in a hangar, so it's a great time to do these uh, Best Loadouts, and I have a mix of different stuff that I had from the test server. We've just had more stuff to do with each of these best loadouts because everybody has higher energy we're getting more weapons it's crazy so it's taking me a little longer but um i think this is going to be really good so let's do what we usually do go to um early mid and late game starting with the early game at three stars, the early game for Ares is the 12 energy builds, and we're going to start it off with a really basic dual RPG 6 build, which I like to call the bread and butter tank, because this one is a pretty vanilla tank, but it puts in good work. You're already familiar with RPGs pretty well at this point in the game. You probably used them on other mechs before you got to Ares, so this isn't anything too, you know, outside the norm for you and probably what you're familiar with, but with his big body and his big shield, Ares can use this really well on just about any situation and any mech. Next up, we have probably a less common build for Ares, but this is the Dual Javelin 6 and what I like to call the Light Air Support Tank. Now, at this point in the game, you probably have already started upgrading maybe your Panther and your Kill Shot, and you may want to move the Javs onto something else. And Ares is actually a good spot for it because it allows him to, with his big body and his shield, to push in a little bit or defend um, and then protect himself well if threats get too close because of his big shield. So overall, he's quite a solid option for this Javs Air Support build. Now, Ares can be actually pretty nice for some hit and run style attacks like this one. This would be the dual missile rack six. I call it the peekaboo burst because this is one where you want to put up your shield, come around a corner, you know, surprise your enemy with some rockets to the face and then peel back so that your body doesn't take much damage and just the, you know, the shield does. So uh, this could be really fun for doing that kind of build. I do think it's a little tougher to do with the missile rack six early game, but definitely possible. And you'll see this one come up a bit more as we get into the higher missile rack variant but a nice one for early game for sure. With the introduction to the arc turrets to the game, these are nice weapons to use on Ares. And this first build early game is the dual arc turret six, what I like to call the basic brawler tank. And if you want to get into brawling with this tank, this is the way to go in my opinion. If you happen to buy Ares, you'll get the pulse cannon six with him, which is decent in that it has good suppression and better range. But if you really want to get in the enemy's face, this is going to be a great way to do it. The damage output that this has is unmatched this early in the game. So it's really the way to go. Put up that shield and get in the enemy's face and just bust some mechs with this build brawler style. Once you rank up Ares, he will have 16 energy at four stars, and this is usually a big deal for most mechs, just like it is for Ares. And this first build we're gonna talk about is the Dual Missile Rack 8, which I like to call the hit and run tank. This will function very similar to the Peekaboo tank build that we already did with the Missile Rack 6, but the ejection speed of the rockets for the Missile Rack 8 is just overall better. You're gonna be able to hit more stuff, you're just gonna be able to do more damage, and with Ares' big body and his shield, he can get in good position to be able to just destroy mechs with it. It's a very fun build to use, very solid. Now this build seems a little unorthodox, but I think it's really effective and one I like and I see a lot of other people using. This is the dual long arm eight and what I like to call the shielded sniper. Now normally uh, I like to use Panther for sniping, but with the shield that Ares has, it allows him a lot of more flexibility to move around when he has his shield up instead of being kind of like beholden to his barrier. Um, it gives him a lot of flexibility, but still being able to do super good shots at long range and still do it where you can comfortably take your shots knowing that you're protected while doing it so it can be a very effective build if you're someone that likes to keep the enemy at bay while you and your teammates flank this can be a great build for it this is the dual pulse cannon 8 and what i like to call the suppression tank now if you're someone who spends money in the game then you may want to get the carbine h which overall starts at a higher you know value and stuff as a legendary weapon um, and it has more damage potential especially now with its double damage chance but this weapon the pulse cannon 8 is still really effective at that especially if you're a free-to-play player and uh, it has a very fast reload I believe the fastest in the game still um, so definitely a good one to consider for suppression all right, next up we have the Arcturn 6 with the Arcturn 10. This I call the beefy brawler and it's just a, you know, a new version of the dual Arc 6. 
and uh, it's still effective. It's just going to be more damaging overall, but you're going to play it the same way. Just get in their face and crush some mechs. Now fairly new to the game and a build for Ares would be the Dual Disc Launcher 8 and this I like to call the hide and seek tank. And as a tank Ares has difficulty with his speed trying to chase down targets. But this actually has a good optimal range and it locks on the targets and let you shoot around corners so it can work really well for that. Also tanks can sometimes get swarmed by targets but the disc launchers have a bit of an AOE that's actually pretty decent. So it allows him to deal with group targets and hunt them down which helps to deal with some of the issues that we have with tanks. So this can be really effective for Ares and tanks in general but works really well on him for sure. Another fairly new build to the game, but one that follows the air support type of theme we did before would be the dual javelin eights. And this one we're just gonna call the medium air support build. So again, you'd play it very similar to what we did with the jav sixes, but this one uh, just does more damage. And so it allow him again to kind of play more defensively or creep up if he needs to, because he has his big body and his shield. Um, so he can be effective in either kind of position with this build. So now we're going to move over to mid game and mid game for Ares is starting at five stars with the 18 energy builds. And the first one we're going to talk about here is the Missile Rack 8 and the Carbine 10, which I like to call the all rounder tank, namely because it's going to be effective for a lot of maps and a lot of situations. Uh, ideally, you want to be close with this because that gives you better accuracy for when you shoot off your missiles and because it's the good optimal range at 30 meters for the Carbine 10. But even when you're not in that optimal range, you can still be very effective, like I said, in a lot of situations very nice build next up we have a variation on the shielded sniper this is the long arm 8 and long arm 10 which i just simply call shielded sniper 2.0 this is going to function very much the same as when we did it with the dual long arm 8s but you're just going to do more damage since you have the 10 now i will say too that the 10 will be decent for some targets when they get up close to you it's not going to be the greatest but it's not the worst either so it can even engage a little bit closer uh, where the 8s couldn't do as well before so it gives you a little bit of that benefit as well um, um, but don't expect it to to kill a whole lot up close. <laughs> Next up, we have another brawler build. This is the Arc-10 and the Missile Rack-8, which I call the Burst Brawler. Yeah, it's a variation, again, of the Arc Turn type builds, but because we have the two added energy, we get more benefit out of the Burst with the Missile Rack-8 than we did with the Arc-6. So it's going to function very similar to those before, but you're just going to have a little bit more Burst, a little bit less sustain. But overall, you should have a better damage output than what you did with just the Arc-10 and 6. If you're looking to do more of a support build, this is a pretty solid one at 18 energy. This is the Stasis Beam 12 and Thermal Lance 6. Now, if you're someone who likes to play this type of role, uh, maybe you like to charge in, protect the whole team, and paint targets for other people to be able to pick them off, this can be really effective. I also really like this type of build if you're a person who's running with someone who's more powerful than you, because it's not going to be easy for you to get all the kills when they're more powerful, or maybe the bots or the enemies are higher SP as well. So this can be really nice as a way to still support the team well to let them kill targets faster and you can still get a lot of those assist achievements and all that good stuff so really nice build for that kind of thing now we got a fairly new build here because most of us don't have access to all these weapons yet but this is the cryo jab 6 and the missile rec 12 which i call the range burst build this works similar to when you would do this with the stasis beam and a, a missile rack but it is a little bit easier to pull off because you can get instantaneous freeze with the cryo jabs and less exposure overall but you're going to have to pick your targets this is kind of situational because you're going to want small to medium sized targets or ones that are damaged that you know you can take out with one volley because you're going to be using both of your weapons to fire and you're going to be exposed or reloading during that process you will have your big body and your shield so Ares is pretty good for this but you know you do want to try to pick the best targets to make it work the best um, but overall pretty effective and fun build to use here's a pretty straightforward sustain build this is the carbine 8 and the carbine 10 which i just call the mid-range tank uh, this is a generally again very effective build in a lot of instances carbines have great range and accuracy and are great up close especially and with their added double damage bonus that they've had they've been doing more damage for people overall so this is a nice build a variation on this could be a pulse cannon 8 with a carbine 10 but i think the benefit of both the ranges of the carbines together can make this a little easier if you you don't use or have not used your pulse cannon eights that much overall though both of them are nice for the sustain type of build 
When you get your Ares up to six star, he will now be at 20 energy, which is still mid game, but very effective. And the first build we're gonna use here is the heavy sustained brawler, which is the dual arc 10. Again, it's a variation of the arc builds that we've talked about before, but this is the highest there is. And I believe it's pretty much the highest you can get when you're talking about raw damage, especially up close like this. You are regulated to mostly up close because the range is so small, but it's a very effective build at doing that. And Ares is great for it. Continuing on with the air support theme that we talked about before, this next build again uses the Jav 8s, but we're going to add a Rocket Mortar 12, and that is going to be the heavy air support tank. Now this build again plays very similar to the other ones, but with the Rocket Mortars in tow, it'll feel very similar to when you've run this either on Javs or some other builds before, but just the added benefit of the uh, Javelin 8s now instead of just the 6s. Overall, very solid build and one that uh, can take a good size beating if anyone tries to creep up on you. Um, so you can protect yourself quite well. Next up, we have a variation on our hide and seek tank. This is the disc launcher eight and 12 put together um, and just hide and seek tank 2.0, pretty straightforward. And it's gonna be straightforward just like the other one. And you're just adding a higher caliber disc launcher. So you're gonna play it just like you did with the eights. Going back to our long arm builds, this is the dual long arm 10, and this is what I like to call the ultimate sniper. I think as a pure sniper, this is one of the best ones for Ares. Um, it's one where, again, you want to engage at range, keep your shield up, just like you've been doing, but you can actually engage people a little bit closer because your dual 10s are going to be outputting some decent damage for those light and medium sized targets. For another all-rounder style build, we have the Carbine 12 and the Missile Rack 8, which I call the Command Tank. It's going to function very similar to when we had it with the Carbine 10, but the Carbine 12 is just going to be doing more damage. So overall, we're just getting more benefit with the energy set that we have to run this build. Going back to a more burst style of damage, we have the Missile Rack 12 with the Missile Rack 8, which I just call the Alpha Strike build, but it's very much like the hit and run style build that we had at 16 energy. You're going to want to try to just use it in that same way, but you just have more damage now with the Missile Rack 12. That's going to cover all the 20 energy builds we wanted to cover, so let's move on to late game where Ares is at his max potential of 24 energy. And we're going to start off with one of my favorite builds for him, and that's the Dual Carbine 12, what I like to call the ultimate mid-range tank. This is a super nice build for almost any situation, any kind of map, um, where Ares is just going to be able to tear it up. He can get really close, he can be further away, he can be very menacing in a lot of situations while being very accurate at a lot of ranges too. Um, it's one of my favorites to do and uh, very effective on Ares. Back to disc launchers, we have the dual disc launcher 12 build, which I like to call the Terminator, just because you are going to be able to chase down your enemies with the awesome energy set that you have of the dual 12s. And again, having that range, that AOE, um, and the ability to curve against your targets, there's not a whole lot of enemies that are going to be able to run away from you as this Ares build. Now this is one I have not run too much, but it's starting to grow on me. This is the Dual Rocket Mortar 12, which I like to call the Bombardier. Uh, so I actually find this to be a little bit better on Juggernaut or maybe even some faster targets like Killshot, but on Ares it's not too bad. And what is nice about this is with your shield, you can peek out to be able to sight targets yourself at longer range, even if they're using something long range like a long arm or a railgun um, to be able to get sight lines for taking your shot. So you can play your own sight man pretty safely with this build that you can't with others. You don't have as great a protection against other rocket mortars because your shield is only in the front, but uh, overall, I still think it's a solid build and one I've gone to from time to time. If you want to commit to Brawling Endgame, this is a really solid build for doing it. This is the Arc Turret 10 and the Missile Rack 12, which I call the Ultimate Brawler Tank. So if you want to be that brawler guy with your shield and get up close in on your enemies, this is a great way to do it. Uh, again, similar to the Arcs, you're going to want to be close for it, even though you do have a little bit more range with the Missile Rack 12, but you want to make sure those missiles hit, and you're going to want to be close for your Arc anyway, so it is great to stay up close, and that's really the best spot for this build. Uh, pretty well unmatched up close in that range. 
Now, if you don't want to go full brawler, but you still want to be pretty fearsome up close and give yourself some flexibility, the Carbine 12 and the Missile Rack 12 build is really good together. I call this the ultimate command tank. Again, you're still going to be fearsome up close and be able to take just about anyone head on, but you're sacrificing a little bit of that damage from the Arc 10 to get the Carbine 12 and be able to get some good range uh, and be very useful further away as well. So really solid build that's useful in a lot of instances. Very nice. Nice. Now, if you want to go more heavy into the burst area, this would be one I would pick for you. This is the Railgun 16 and the Missile Rack 8 for the ultimate burst tank. Yeah, you're getting that burst damage from the missile racks just like you did with the 12s. It's a little bit less there, but that's because you're carrying the railgun, which is also burst damage, but has insane range. The missile rack eight is gonna be great for dealing with, you know, finishing off targets quick up close and knocking off shields, and then allowing the railgun to do the work of just taking away chunks of life at various ranges. So very effective burst damage overall, very good on Ares too. Moving back onto the support builds, we have the Stasis Beam 16 with the Thermal Lance 6, which I just call Support Tank 2.0. This is going to function very much the same as it was with the Stasis Beam 12, but you're going to hit Stasis a little faster and just do more damage with the 16. That's really the only difference on this, but still plays the same role. Gotta have the Thanos build in here. This is the Railgun 16 with the Long Arm 8, a classic one in the whole world of Mecarina, and it runs really well on Ares when he is maxed out. Uh, since he did the dual Long Arm 10 so well, this is just a variation with that, but uh, one where you can actually fire these two weapons together. So the function for these is a little different if you haven't ever run a Long Arm with the Railgun, since the way these fire or the speed at which the bullets travel is a little different. You can fire both together and get uh, good shots as well as get the overheat on the same volley with the railgun. So very effective build, very useful on Ares. And last up, we have the end game or heavy burst for Ares with the dual missile rack 12, which I call the ultimate alpha strike. Really great for rushing in, taking targets, dealing with groups of enemies, uh, and even doing those hit and run style of attacks that we like to do with this type of build. So very fun and very effective to run on Ares. So there we go, that covers all the different builds that we wanted to do for Ares. Obviously there are tons that we could do for Ares and probably some that I missed. Feel free to comment below with some of the ones that you like to use or maybe some that you liked even in this video. Um, I always love hearing from you guys, but that is all we're gonna cover for Ares. So I hope you enjoyed that and we will see you out there on the battlefield.